So what's the session we got here? Well, this is a similar kind of concept with the melodic sequencer. It's um, a half bar um, and by using, can you see the screen there? The screen. Okay. <laughs> um, so it originally started off with, um, you can see the, I'm not sure if you can see that close up, but each one of these scale uh, MIDI effects this is called Q, this is A, this is Z, this is Q, A, Z. So the original concept was to be able to press the keys um, and then alternatively shift with the keys and it would shut off. So you can see if I push Q, it shuts this scale on and off. Um, and what's, what it's doing is it's letting through the stacked uh, MIDI. So on each step that it plays each drum sound as you go along. In the same way that we had the notes before, now it's just it's triggering a drum. Exactly, yeah. So, and then I set it up with push so that it would be a little bit easier. So when I turn the lights off, then it'll play the, the corresponding drums in that uh, place, as well as mutes for each channel, um, which are the eight steps. It kind of, I don't know, it's kind of like a little techno beat machine. Um, so I just have a kick and a clap bass there, and then you can kind of just... make little, uh, little grooves. Um, and, then it, and then it also has uh, each drum routed through um, its own channel here. So you kind of have a matrix of sends where you can go to reverb, chorus, delay, uh, vocoder, or flanger. So as you kind of turn these up, you can have a little bit of fun. Um, and I was uh, talking to a friend of mine, he's, um, he's in a few different groups. Uh, the first one, the, he's in uh, Inkwell, he did a remix for me on Wagon Repair quite a few years ago. Ryan Tran, he said that uh, he didn't like how rigid the step sequences were. So I decided that I would add some shuffles. So then each second step is moved over um, gradually as you go down, see so there's different different amounts of shuffle. So you get a nice kind of like housey kind of vibe, swing. To the point where it's uh, almost train wrecking. <laughs> um, and then he said, uh, well, that's all fine, but 
you still have this rigid swing. So, you know, everything is still in, everything is swung in a very natural way. So now um, you can have the swing at different amounts. So this one here will be swung the most. This is swung about halfway and that one swung not at all. So you can get these non-traditional swinging. You can have it kind of stressed and swung wherever you want it to be. Um, and he said, still again, that's fine, but they're still stuck there. And so with the action follow, I decided that I would make it so that they move around. So every two bars, they switch <laughs> to a close, uh, one of the close shuffles on either side of it. So every two bars, it, it switches to I guess uh, the one thing that's good about that is to have the kick and the snare still straight, otherwise it starts getting really messy. Yeah. This thing is amazing. This has changed my life. Yeah. It, instead of from the gone from the clicking every note into being able to sequence it with this, yeah. um, everyone who uses Ableton should get one, I think. Um, when I'm in the studio with my brother, we have um, an Ableton project open mm -hmm. uh, with all the MIDI routed so that we can control all of his equipment. Mm -hmm. And I sit there and I sequence everything from the push. Um, and I don't look at the computer. It's very rare that I need to look up at the computer to change something. Um, and it's always so deep in a menu that I would never want that to be buried somewhere in the controller anyway. It would just make it way too complicated. It's just enough it's the perfect kind of balance of complex and simplicity. Um, so you can just get your ideas out very quickly. Yeah, I don't work for Ableton. <laughs>